So AI is overhyped. That might be one of the many narratives that you have heard about AI. I'm going to share with you in the next 15 minutes 10 common narratives on AI and how we beg to differ. But first off, I would like to congratulate Steffi on 20 years of DLD, creating this inspiring dialogue between technology, culture, and science, and for fostering innovation in the very heart of Europe. So AI is overhyped. We think, in fact, that AI is still underappreciated. Some people say that certain things are overhyped in the short term and underappreciated in the long term. We, in fact, think that AI is even underappreciated in the short term. And the reason is that AI, unlike any other technology before it, is self-learning. So the current large language models are training the next generation of large language models. And one of the leading Gen AI researchers, Rion Jones, who was also here at DLD, calls that LLM squared. And that means that AI is progressing at a much faster rate than anything we have seen before, and is also much more unpredictable. In fact, we believe that AI is the most profound innovation in human history. What was the watershed moment in Gen AI? It was the Transformer model in 2017. And why do I say that with such conviction? Because I was experimenting with neural nets in the early 2000s. And I could see firsthand how difficult it was to come up with reliable predictions back then. Now, Gen AI can create all sorts of content with high reliability, very diverse content. It can tell jokes. It can write code, even to improve itself. It can create movies with de-aged versions of its main characters. It can predict the 3D structure of proteins. And more recently, it can predict the activity of neurons in our human brain. So with all of these abilities, it's not surprising that AI will be, in our mind, the biggest productivity boom, cause the biggest productivity boom in human history. One other narrative you may have heard. AI capex is too high. Microsoft just announced 80 billion in capex a week ago. We think that capex will only going, is only going to go up. We, in fact, believe it will about, come to about 400 billion in capex by 2027. And the data center capex for AI will dwarf the general data center capex. This actually means, to put it in perspective, that we will spend more on data centers than we have spent on fiber cable optics in the late 90s. This sounds massive, but here is why it's going to happen. Models will need more compute for training, on the one hand, to actually make the brain better and better, but also for inference when it answers questions that we pose to it or when we ask it to solve problems. On the training side, there are two things that are going to drive more compute, parameters and data. So the state-of-the-art large language models have about a trillion parameters right now. And these models, the architecture of these models is inspired by the human brain. We, as humans, have about 100 trillion synapses. So clearly, more upside there. And also, the data that, are, that is currently used to train these models is only a fraction of the data that we currently have. And every day, we create more data. So if you think about both data and parameters, those can easily scale up by a factor of 100x. 
On the inference side, we had a big moment, a defining moment on December 20th. That is when OpenAI shipped O3. And I should say that if I mention specific companies, in no way should they be considered investment advice. But O3 introduces a new level of reasoning. And that reasoning does step-by-step -step logical reasoning to solve problems. And in fact, Jensen Huang, the CEO and founder of NVIDIA thinks that it is this new way of reasoning that will solve problems that we as humans have not been able to solve for over 150 years. And he thinks those problems, like the Riemann hypothesis or Navier-Stokes, will be solved through this new way of reasoning within five years. Narrative three, GPUs, these AI chips, general purpose AI chips, graphical processing unit, will see a lot of competition. We think differently. We think that GPUs will remain the core of the AI data center because they are much more suited for parallel processing, especially when these algorithms start to evolve. One historical proof point, if you go back to 2012, GPUs were used for the first time for computer vision. And the narrative was the same back then. GPUs will likely see a lot of competitive pressure. And now we roll forward to 2025. What are the dominant ships for computer vision? GPUs. AI is not worth the investments. We think AI will be more than worth the current investments. We, in fact, think the application layer for AI will generate 400 billion of revenue by 2027. Why, why do we believe this? Uh, we don't have the exact RI, but we have a lot of data points that we can refer to. Think about the developer productivity. You buy a license for Copilot for $100 a year, and as a developer, you gain 56% 56, 56 in productivity. That's, you know, looking at average salaries for developers, about 1,000 ROI or return on investment. But there might be some more authoritative quotes. So two CEOs of large companies in the US have recently commented on the ROI of Gen AI. Doug McMillan, the CEO of Walmart, said that they use Gen AI in order to update its product catalog. 850 million items. They use Gen AI, the ROI was 100x. But you may want dollar amounts. So here's what Andrew Jassy, the CEO of Amazon, said. We saved $260 million by upgrading 30,000 Java applications from one version to the next. So while we do not know exactly what the overall quantity of productivity gains will be, I think there's one thing that we know for sure, that these data points that I cited will be the weakest that we'll ever hear about. Number five, AI company margins will go down. Microsoft, Amazon, Google, right? They spend so much on CapEx that will translate into depreciation, that will hit margins. We actually think margins can go up. And the reason is that these companies use AI in order to boost their internal productivity. Andy Jassy just, just heard him comment on the savings from code upgrades. NVIDIA uses AI to design the next generation of its chips. In fact, NVIDIA is one of the companies with the highest revenue per employee in the technology sector. So these companies, they drink their own champagne. They use, they're the best users of their own products. The other thing 
chip companies surely will remain chip companies. We think that vertically integrated AI foundries will emerge. That companies will try to cover all layers of the value chain, the enabling layer, the intelligence layer, and the application layer. And many companies already do. If you think about Microsoft, their own Microsoft Azure, they're also in the intelligence layer because they own 49% of OpenAI, and they have the applications, the Copilot, GitHub Copilot, but also Office Copilot. Google, the same. But even a company, a chip company like NVIDIA, they certainly are part of the enabling layer, but they also have their own large language model, Nemo. They have their own cloud, DGX Cloud. And they're building now a whole stack of services, microservices, with NIMS on their platform. So AI will release a whole new set of competitive dynamics that will change the technology landscape over the next years. Another narrative, software companies will profit from Gen AI. We think that existing software companies will be heavily disrupted. Why? Because one of the superpowers of Gen AI is writing code. We think software will be ubiquitous. And what is ubiquitous is by definition not scarce and therefore likely less valuable. In fact, Google just said that now a quarter of its code base is written by Gen AI. So we believe that existing software companies will be severely disrupted. Narrative eight, only tech companies can benefit from AI. We think that every company with differentiated data assets and an AI-first mindset has a chance to benefit. We've heard many companies talk about how they use AI in their company enterprise value chain, certainly in financials, but also in healthcare. Companies like Moderna and Pfizer have mentioned how they use Gen AI all the way from drug discovery to clinical trials. So every company has a chance to reinvent itself with AI. Narrative nine, open source models will supersede closed source models. Since the last year, we now have over a million of these large language models. That is up from about 110,000 just a year ago. The majority of these new models are open source models. Yet, what do we see when we look at the leaderboard of these large language models? Closed source models are still at the top. So despite all this competition, they're not able to compete. Why? Because of the sheer capex that's required to stay at the top of the leaderboard. Daria Moda, the CEO of Anthropic, said this year, the training for the state-of-the-art foundational models will cost $10 billion. That's up just from a billion last year. So the one barrier to entry for open source models will be the sheer amount of CapEx. Lastly, application layer companies will be attractive investing opportunities. What we think is that the intelligence layer and the application layer are likely going to merge over time. There are many companies that have been built on these large foundational models. Companies in marketing, legal assistance, and those are promising, but I do believe that they run the risk of being superseded and becoming features of a next generation of large language models. Currently, the state-of-the-art large language models already perform PhD-level tasks in literally every field and application. So with that, let me close off with one view that is <laughs> very important view um, that, that maybe summarizes those 10 views. 
that AI is going to reshape our world at an exponential rate, and at a rate that may be faster than we can comprehend. Thank you so much.